is asked a question. Brother from Nigeria, your name Kushi? Khalil Mahmoud. Khalil Mahmoud. Yes. Yes. He wants to know the clear distinction between the two attributes of Allah of being uh, the possessor of Jalal and possessor of Jamal and their manifestation in Islam and other religions so that some prophets are called Jalali prophets and some are called Jalali and sometimes there is a phase of Jalal and there is a following phase of Jamal that is what you want to find out now Jalal means in ordinary terms, it may also mean anger, but it's not bad. Jalal means a mood which is very serious and uh, full of determination. And at any cost, if one has decided to do it, even if anger has to be involved, that is called Jalal. So, at the time when Allah sends those prophets, uh, the prophets with law, at that time it is a particular period of the expression of Jalal. Willy nilly, whatever may happen, that book of law will have to be established in the lifetime of that prophet. So if, if, if people use sword against the such prophets, Swords sword would be permitted to be used against the offenders. And ultimate, ultimate victory has to be won in the lifetime of that prophet because unless he has demonstrated the law to the people with, with his own example, he cannot uh, be satisfied as to the fact that people have understood the message correctly. The Holy Quran mentions this in the verse That O Holy Prophet, this is why we repeat the verses in so many ways. We give them different terms so that people may understand. And you, be sh you should be satisfied when they say it in so many words against you, Darasta, you have fulfilled your duty as a teacher and we have fully understood. So that phase cannot be completed unless the victory is won during the lifetime of that prophet and the first phase is established completely. He must be able to demonstrate it in a manner as if in a, in a manner where he is also power to do that. If he is not given the power of state, for example, in his lifetime, how can he implement such things where the authority of state is required? So that phase is of Jalal. And Allah will not wait for the people to for a very long period. They have to accept at least in, in as much as a full authority is exercised by the prophet of that time in, the, in, a, in an area where he is uh, uh, sent primarily or to a people to which he is sent primarily. This is Jalal. And the phase of Jamal is the phase of patience. The whole Jalal is left to the people to exercise against uh, the servants of Allah. And Allah says that it is not Jalal alone which can win. It is Jamal which can also which can win. And the Jamal means that whatever atrocities you commit against the people, the people are not permitted to pay you in the same coins. The sword is handed over, handed over to the persecutor. The power to lit fires is delegated to the persecutors. The power to persecute and loot and put to arson and destroy and kill, all the annihilating powers are handed over to the, to the persecutor. And it said, do whatever you will. You will not win. Perseverance 
patience, love, must become victorious over the cause of hatred and annihilation. This is the period of Jamal. As you may have witnessed in the history of Christianity, against the period of Jamal, now this period also requires patience in the sense that uh, your victory is not uh, within a generation or two. Sometimes it lingers on and on. For centuries sometimes you have to offer sacrifices. But with Jamal, never with anger, with the result that that victory which is attained through Jamal later on, this is the second phase of the same religion in fact. <coughs> it's a different phenomena, but it belongs to the prophet of the first of the religion, the founder prophet of the religion, because it is he who shall be who has been given the responsibility. So the, both these phases originally belong to him, but have been unfolded, one during his lifetime, and the second during after the after his lifetime, during his phase farther apart. So this is how you compare Hazrat Musa's time with Hazrat Isa's time. And the victory which is attained later on by Jamal, it is much wider and much more lasting. It encompasses not only the people to whom it, the message is addressed, but to the people around as well. It's a very strong phenomenon that when it comes into motion, and ultimately wins. So this is why Ahmad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was told in the Holy Quran that you are like a prophet before you there is more than you. And it says Kama Asalna Ala Ferona Rasula. We have sent this prophet, raised this prophet, as we raised the prophet towards Pharaoh, that is Moses. And uh, the first the founder of Islam, according to the Holy Quran, is similar to the founder of uh, this, uh, what you call the religion of Torah. <coughs> Judaism is called, but in fact it is the religion of Torah. So that similarity is not, does not end there, they are, just, they are the lawmakers, and the lawmakers. The similarity continues into other, other, other regions. Sword was raised against Hazrat Moses. Sword was then raised against Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu That sword was defeated with sword at the hands of Moses ultimately and at the hand of Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu The law of the law was completed and established during their lifetime. And how strong the enemy may appear now when we look back, it was totally destroyed. This is a phenomena which was unrolled and unveiled during the time of the Muhammad Mustafa So when he promises the Ummah that the end, at the end a, a Messiah would also appear, it shows automatically, it is, it is inferred from that, that as the founder was not the same Moses but similar to him, so the Messiah would be the similar, similar a, a, a person or an office holder similar to the old Messiah, not he himself. It is the phenomena which is going to be unfolded. And the same phenomena, ha, phenomena has been unfolded by Hazrat Masih Maudulai And we are passing through the same phases of torture and persecution. And it seems there is an unending chain which will not end in our lifetime. It will continue. Allah knows how long it's going to be. But we know positively that if the Messiah of Moses was made ultimately and finally and consummately victorious by Allah, it is impossible that the Messiah of Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa is not made more conspicuously conquered and victorious and the ultimate winner. So that is what is going to happen in Shah. And Hazrat Muslim Salaam has also mentioned this, that it's not necessary that Ahmadiyyat should take 300 years, because there is an additional blessing of Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa Salaam, 
which is obviously exercising in our favor. For example, Jesus was crucified, but Hazrat Muhammad Hussain was saved from crucifixion despite their best attempt to put him to death through uh, hanging. That is all the sort of crucifixion in existence in the present days. But the attempts failed, concocted murder, and they go on to till today. These people always behave in the same manner. Distorted minds always think in the same terms. The crime is repeated by different people, but the manner of crime remains the same. <coughs> so Allah saved him. So it is not necessary that the similarity should be extended to each detail. But the similarity, similarity is to extend it, to be extended in departments, in generalities. And there you find so many similarities between Hazrat Muslim of Islam and the Messiah of God that uh, it is surprising. I'll tell about that later, but first let me finish this part that Hazrat Muslim of Islam has uh, given us the glad title that it is not, not necessary that we will have to wait for 300 years. Maybe within 200 years, maybe even within 100 years. So the, the, the exceptional phase of sacrifices which we have entered also gives us the glad timing that there is going to be an exceptional phase of Allah's favors. And within a matter of uh, our lifetime, I'm quite certain, inshallah, we'll see great changes occurring. And uh, Allah help us to be patient till that time. And let's hope that Allah will bring that time sooner than we expect. Now the similarity between Hazrat Muslim of Islam and the Messiah are so many. For example, you can measure the distance through years. Hazrat Isa Islam appeared at the head of the 14th century. About 1300 years after Hazrat Muslim. And Hazrat Muslim of the Rasulullah Sallallahu appeared at the head of the 14th century. Hazrat Musa was permitted to raise sword against sword. Hazrat Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was permitted to raise sword against sword. But Messiah was not. So was not Hazrat Muslim of the Every time an effort was made through coercion, through torture, through persecution, through prosecution by the Jews, to annihilate Christianity. The net result was that Christianity always emerged bigger and stronger. And it's a strange thing that every time the swords were defeated and the throats which were cut were not defeated. Those who burned houses, they were made poorer. And whose houses were burned, they were not made poorer. They went on spreading and gaining in everything. So the same phenomena we have seen with our own eyes unfolded at the time of the Muslim of the Islam. And we are going through them, these phases. And again, the Muslim of the Islam was uh, told by Allah that uh, in response to their cruelty, you must teach patience and tell your people to pray. The same was the message of the Christ of all, the Messiah. This is exactly what he taught. Hazrat Rasim of the Salaam was mocked at by his enemies. And they said, look here, unless you descend bodily from heaven, we are not going to believe you. The same thing happened about Jesus Christ. He was told that we should not believe in you, we would not believe in you, until Elia descends from heaven body. <coughs> and the Bible tells us that they mock at the followers of the Messiah, peace be upon him. And they said, look, they, they, told, they went and complained to the master, the Messiah. <coughs> look here, this is what the rabbis and the Pharisees are doing to us. They come and mock at us. They say, produce the Elia first. How can you expect us to believe? And 
Hazrat Masih, you know what he said in answer? He said, John the Baptist, Yohanna, is the same age Elijah who was to descend from heaven, believe it or not. So the verdict was given for all time. This was exactly the objection against the new Messiah. Expectation of somebody appearing from heaven in body, not in spirit. And the same was the answer of the same the So there are so many departments that the Muslim has mentioned to my memory 14 similarities. And uh, again, for example, there is one similarity of his appearance at the end. And the Surah Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has used the same word, Asreen. That Messiah would appear among the Asreen. And after that, there would be Qiyamah, um, or the day of resurrection, or the day of ultimate annihilation. So, the same thing is said in the Deen, that after Messiah appears, there will be Qiyamah. And the day of resurrection or the day of total annihilation of the world, whatever you call it. So this is one. This this is also a, a, a department of similarity. But there are so many. As the Sima has mentioned about fourteen, and I have also been mentioning them, various near various places. So you understand the phenomena of Jamal. Jamal is a very strange phenomena. Apparently, it's a very soft-looking word. How beautiful and soft that Jamal is going to appear. But it is so torturous and so, uh, I mean, painful that those people who become the symbol of Jamal, of Allah Jamal, representative of Allah Jamal, they have to suffer a very great deal. So, Jalal apparently is a very strong and uh, powerful phenomena with a sense of anger in it as I have explained. But on the other hand, people during the Jamal, Jalal, are better off in so many ways. But Hazrat Rasulullah Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is one prophet <coughs> who encompasses every situation in himself as well. It is not that Hazur Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was only representative of Jalal and he left the Jamal from the same of the Nasrat of Salaam and his people retired. It is wrong to say this. He was and he encompassed both these qualities to the utmost. And there are two phases in his life which are distinct from the, from the other, one from the other. For example, the, the period of Mecca and the period of Medina. Period of Mecca is the consummation of Jamal. And the period of Medina is the consummation of Jalal. So, although in his lifetime both the phenomena were uh, manifested, yet as a period, it takes a long period. Both the period of Jalal and period of Jamal are not periods uh, uh, contained in one lifetime. They are extended to many generations. So as such, we can say positively that Amru sallallahu phase was that of Jamal predominantly because after him there was a very long period of Jalal. Despite the fact that he encompassed both in his own person. And in the time of Muslim Islam, there is going to be a long period and phase of Jamal as it is there.